Mr. President, I rise today to honor the memories of lives we lost and all who were injured or impacted in Las Vegas on October 1st, 2017. Five years ago, Nevada experienced tragedy on an unprecedented scale. In just 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 58 innocent lives were taken, hundreds of people were injured by gunfire, and hundreds more were injured in the chaos that followed. Sadly, in the years since, two more victims of that night's attack died because of the injuries they received during that shooting, bringing the death toll to 60. During the attack, scores of heroic first responders, police officers, firefighters, paramedics, and others arrived at the scene in an attempt to neutralize the threat and provide aid to the victims. Then hundreds of doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals, well, they worked nonstop to save the lives of those on the scene. That day, the attack on the Route 91 Harvest Festival became the deadliest mass shooting in American history. Let me repeat that, the deadliest mass shooting in American history. And to this day, sadly, even with all the mass shootings we've endured, endured over the past few years since then, one October, one October still remains the single deadliest mass shooting in American history. And all it took, all it took was just 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Dozens of lives to be cut short, hundreds more injured and traumatized with emotional and physical scars they will carry with them for the rest of their lives. These were our friends. These were our neighbors. For some, they were their family. And now, there are 60 families that will never be the same, 60 families that will forever have an empty chair every night at their kitchen table. One October changed our community and the history of our state forever. It left a hole that can never be filled. We're united in our grief for those we lost and also in our gratitude and admiration for the heroes that day who worked to rescue and aid those in danger. This dark day put on full display the tight-knit community of Southern Nevada that we all know and love. We came to, together to celebrate and thank the heroism for those who helped, our law enforcement officers, our first responders, our medical professionals, and so many everyday people. They just ran towards danger. They ran towards danger to help to get people to safety. Hundreds lined up for blocks to donate blood. They offered their cars for people who were displaced by the chaos. Our community well, it rallied together, not just in the immediate aftermath, but in the days, weeks, and months, and now years after. And I know why. Because we are Vegas strong. We are Nevada strong. And today, as we reflect on the five-year anniversary since this horrific event, I stand here to honor the 60 individuals who lost their lives, the hundreds of survivors, and all of those, all of those who experienced that traumatic event. I stand here today to honor the heroes, our first responders, our community members, those who risked their lives to help others. In Nevada, the Vegas Strong Resiliency Center that supports those affected by the one October tragedy, well, they launched a wide array of efforts to help people heal from and cope with the trauma and take action to honor the victims. So I have a floor chart here. I know it's a little hard to see, but one of the projects the Resiliency Center is organizing on this fifth anniversary is creating a lantern. This is a picture of a lantern as an uh, outline of the Las Vegas skyline. This lantern is going to serve as a sign of solidarity and respect for victims, survivors, and responders to the tragic shooting as it lights up the night with hope. Because the lanterns are a symbol representing the fact that out of darkness, out of the darkness of that night, came the strongest light shining on countless examples of heroism, big and small, displayed by Nevadans. 
but as we remember this fifth anniversary, we must also recommit ourselves to action. In the nearly five years since 1 October, the epidemic of gun violence has impacted even more communities and broke more families' hearts all across our great nation. And finally, after the recent mass shooting at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, Congress was able to finally come together and act. We passed the most significant gun safety legislation in almost 30 years. This was a breakthrough, and we know it will help save lives keeping guns out of the hands of dangerous people. But it cannot be an endpoint. We can and we must do more to prevent these shootings. And I know we can do this while also respecting people's constitutional rights. We can take common sense, bipartisan action, like permanently banning bump stocks, high capacity magazines, which allowed the one October shooter to fire so many rounds and cause so much carnage. Bump stocks, in particular, are modifications that only make guns more deadly. The previous administration, administration took regulatory action to address this issue, but the move to ban bump stocks now faces a wave of troubling legal challenges that threaten to reverse that progress. That's why I call on this chamber to finally pass legislation that will permanently ban bump stocks, permanently ban bump stocks, and cut off access to these deadly and unnecessary weapons devices. Remember, remember this. With these devices, a shooter can fire hundreds of rounds to end or damage lives in mere minutes. One October, just 10 minutes. Inaction is not an option. We owe it to those who have experienced the pain of gun violence to do more. We owe it to the future generations to keep up our efforts. At the end of the day, this is all about keeping communities safe. We must continue working to prevent more tragedies like the one that brought so much heartbreak to my hometown. And Mr. President, I ask all my colleagues in this chamber to remember and honor the memory of the 60 victims of 1 October as we mark this five-year anniversary. Thank you. I yield my time.